All right, welcome back, everyone. I'm here with our very special guest, uh, all the way from Zoo Miami, Ron McGill. Hey, there, Johnny. Thanks for coming. My pleasure. Pleasure to be here. Now, uh, before before we uh, get too far into things, I want to offer my condolences for Carlita, who passed oh, away this tiger. week. Oh, Tiger. Yeah, you know, it's a sad thing when you lose an animal like that, but you got to understand in the long run, she was over 21 years old. Tigers in the wild live to be around 12 at best, so she lived a good life. And, uh, you know, to be quite honest with you, again, she had begun to decline really quickly quite rapidly and uh, I hope that when I get to that stage that someone could just give me a shot and I could go to sleep peacefully like that too I mean I know it's a controversial thing but uh, there's something beneficial about being an animal and not being able to have to suffer and uh, that was the thing that we promised ourselves that we'd never let her do and and she didn't she you know I was there she just literally closed her eyes took a deep breath and she just went to sleep so you know she lived a good life she uh, I think influenced uh, generations of people so we move on yeah it's really great um, but you use this word there, and I, um, what is an animal? What is an animal? Yes. It depends. I guess you walk around this campus far enough, it's hard to distinguish, huh? <laughs> yeah. I'd say so. I mean, with my cousin Frank here around here, yeah. yeah. It's pretty hard. Um, you know, we're all animals. Mm -hmm. I mean, the bottom line is we're all animals. I, I think, like I say, I, you know, uh, people tell me all the time, well, you know, animals don't have souls, animals don't have feelings. That's a bunch of BS. Animals have feelings. Anybody who's got a pet dog, a pet cat, you work with your animals for any portion of your life, you know those animals have feelings. Uh, I, I've, watched, I've watched animals uh, lose their mother and die of depression. Literally stop eating and just die. You know, I saw that happen to a chimpanzee in Tanzania. Um, I've seen a mother just totally go ballistic, out of her mind, when she loses her, her infant, either to predation or somebody steals it or whatever. Um, so animals have feelings, you know, and animals have personalities too. This is the other thing. People think that animals are clones of each other. You know, every animal acts exactly the same. Not like a, a boy band. Ones. <laughs> like a boy band. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, 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 you know, the bottom line is anybody who's worked with animals know they have different personalities. Some animals are more friendly than others. Some are more aggressive than others. You know, you just have to feel it out. And animals, like people, are a product of their environment. They really are. Uh, you mentioned Tanzania. You've been all over the world. You've been to Africa, what, like two million times or something like that? No, I believe I'll be leaving uh, in a few months on my 50th trip to Africa. Wow, congratulations. Yeah, yeah thanks. It was, you know, look, I'm the son of an immigrant dad, uh, third good education, moved to, born and raised in a small apartment in New York City. These guys out here, they're kind of spoiled. You guys got, you know, Discovery Networks, Animal Planet, National Geographic Channel. I had one show growing up. Only the professors are going to remember the show, a show called Wild Kingdom. It's a guy named Jim Fowler, and I watched him the little 12-inch black and white television set. I don't know, you probably call him gray, because that's what my daughter said. What's the matter with that TV? It's gray. Anyway, black and white. It was a little 12-inch, and we had the antenna always broke, but you opened it up and down like this, so we used a coat hanger on it. And that's what I watched, and I had four channels, and you had to move them with your hand. Okay? Um, so we watched that, and I watched that show, and that's always what I wanted to do, is go see these animals around the world. The guy on that show, the host of that show, was a guy named Jim Fowler. And I actually got to meet him about 25 years ago, and he became kind of my mentor, and he trained me a lot of things. And we've done television documentaries together. We've won Emmy Awards together. I've been work walking through the rainforest of Panama with him. And, you know, like I said, I've gone swimming with sea lions off the Galapagos Islands, charged by elephants in the Serengeti, ridden the top of elephants searching for tigers in India. I have lived the dream. I've got the greatest scam in the world going on. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you, you're also a photographer, and I've seen your stuff. It's really great. What... What came first, your passion for animals or your, your passion for photography? You know, it was animals because what I did was you had to legitimize yourself. You had to give yourself credibility. So I go right into the animal field. You got to start writing papers and publishing papers so you get some credibility. Mm -hmm. And I send in these papers for publication and say, hey, you need some pictures. So then I call stock agencies to buy the photographs. And they're charging some obscene amount of money. I said, get the hell out of here. For the amount of money I got to pay for your picture, I'll buy a camera. And that's what I did. So I bought a camera and I said, let me, let me find it. You know, what does it take to take a picture? You know, click, okay, well, you'll take the picture. And the bottom line is this. <laughs> You know, a lot of people, listen, I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm actually very privileged. I was just the um, call this year and I was told by, I was, uh, I was uh, appointed a Nikon ambassador, one of only 16 Nikon ambassadors in the country. But this is the scam I got going on. The places I go, you can't take a bad picture. You know what I'm saying? I mean, if you're in the middle of Victoria Falls and the falls are falling down and you've got elephants walking around, you go like this, click, it's a good picture. <laughs> people go, oh, that's really cool. You can't mess that up. Okay, so, so that's, you gotta, you gotta be common sense wise here. Photography is what you make it. So I went and bought the cameras and I took the pictures myself and this way I don't have to buy the stupid photographs from somebody else and I submit them with the photographs, they get published and they got the whole thing going on. Now Nikon sponsors me, fly around the world, take pictures for your equipment, 
Again, the scam continues. It's a good deal, but I've been looking at pictures all day, and I'd love to see a real animal, so we're going to cut to a break, and when we come back, hopefully I can see one. We'll be right back with more Off the Wire. <laughs> 